If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual business coach. I'm here as always with my friend, my best friend at Boquete. Catherine Loranger, and she is also a spiritual business coach and comes at things from a very different angle. So we have fun with this. And so today we're actually re-recording this episode. So I'm telling you this because this episode got lost somewhere in our system. And so if you hear me refer back in the next episode to something we said in this episode, and we didn't say it, it's because the episode was lost and we're recreating it. So who it's knows? Not- it's not because you're crazy. No. Or at least this is not the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> These are not the droids you're looking for. Yeah. They're not the, yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, today we are talking again, because clearly we didn't say the right things the first time, because otherwise it wouldn't have gotten lost. So today we're talking about business as an experiment, and we're going to, we're going to run down this road and make it go. So Catherine, this is this was really your idea for an episode. So why don't you start us off with what you mean by business as an experiment? Yeah. So, you know, I think so the ins the inspo for this was a lot of the business owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs that I work with have this idea. And I had this idea at one point too, that everybody else knows what they're doing that there is the one right, perfect way to do business. And once you figure it out, it's all, it's all good. So there's like this like secret kind of thing that's going on that maybe you just haven't, like you're not in the club yet, or you haven't figured it out yet. And so what I have come to realize in my own kind of personal life and business, and also in kind of various roles I've had in business leadership and in working with my clients is that it really is an experiment. So there are, you know, within that experiment, there are some right, perfect ways to do things, right? So P&L statement, like there's kind of a way you do that tracking cash flow. There's kind of a way you do that. So there are some best practices for sure, But within that, it really is an experiment. And so in that experiment, you, the invitation is to approach it like a scientist. So you have a hypothesis. Okay. So if I approach my business in this way, I'm going to generate this kind of result. And then as you approach it in that way, you're measuring the metrics. You're looking at your numbers to see if that's actually giving you the result that you want. And if it's not, then you go back and you analyze it and you, you try something different. So it is this kind of experimental process to find the right, perfect way for you and your business. And then within that experiment and within the business kind of environment, there are some elements that are always going to be changing. So your competition, marketing strategies, you know, what's kind of like the new hot, fresh kind of thing that people are interested in. So I'm going to invite you to, if you notice that it resonates for you, that you feel like there is like some, something that everybody else knows, then this kind of ties into imposter syndrome, which we've talked about also and perfectionism. So if it feels like everybody else knows what they're doing, but you don't try on the perspective of the persona of I'm a scientist and I'm in an experiment. So it's not that I'm doing it wrong. It's just that I haven't quite figured out yet the way that's going to generate the result that I want. I so wish that I had that advice when I first got started, especially around marketing, right? Because, you know, I had done a lot of, I had taken a a ton of classes on business and stuff like that. When, so when I was 19, I was working as administrative assistant to a woman who was a friend of mine who was running a payroll company. And she took one of those early versions of Prozac that sent her off the deep end and she went completely off her nut and she would just disappear for two weeks at a time. And I was de facto running the company at 19 years old, no business experience, no nothing. I was just like, and so I went and immediately, you know, took as many classes as I could find, bought a bunch of books, tried to figure out what was going on to try and live up to this. Right. 
So I had done a lot of that before I started my own business. But what I didn't do was the marketing side. She had been doing door-to-door marketing, you know, sales, door-to-door sales. And so that I knew, I knew how to do the sales, but I didn't know how to do any marketing. <clears throat> and so when time came to run my own business and do my own marketing, I thought that like everything else I had learned about business, that there was a way you were supposed to do it. And you had the right way and the wrong way. And I did not understand, no matter how many times people told me that you had to iterate and iterate and iterate and try new things and, you know, A-B test and the whole nine yards. I just kept thinking there was a right way and a wrong way. I was very much in my black and white thinking when I first started. And it really hamstrung me because when I would do it the quote unquote wrong way and it wouldn't work, which to me meant it wouldn't work in the first five seconds, right? (laughs) Because that's the other thing is you got to give it time to work, right? But when it didn't work in the first five seconds, I would be like, ah, what did I do wrong? And I suck and I've got to do something totally different. And the universe didn't place the stamp of of, of approval on the forehead of my my marketing. So clearly I'm doing something different and I have to do it all over again. And and I'd throw the baby out with the bathwater and I'd start over and I'd recreate my offer from scratch and I'd do the whole thing. It's like, oh my God, so many offers, so much wasted time, right? If I had just understood the experiment concept, it would have saved me so much time in what I was doing. And, you know, now, you know, I'm still not very good at at iterating marketing. That's why I hire marketing people now, because I have no patience for the iterations. But, you know, if you know that about yourself, then you outsource it, right? You, you, that's what you do. You know, this is the other part of the experiment is understanding who you are and what you do well and what you don't do well, because nobody's good at everything. I am... I have been doing graphic design, even though I'm a terrible graphic designer, I have been trying, struggling, you know, flubbing along for 20 some years, doing various and sundry graphic design things that I needed done immediately rather than having the time to outsource them. And, you know, I've gotten better, but I still suck as a graphic designer. It's not who I am. It's not what I do. And I, you know, I do my best and it's better than it was 20 years ago, but it's still not what I do. Right. So you know, when you know that you are not good at things, those are the things that you want to outsource. You know, this is part of the experiment is going, oh, look, you know, I'd like to be good at this. I'd like to be a great graphic designer, but I am not. (laughs) But would you, but would you really want to be a great graphic designer? I would enjoy it. Okay. I would enjoy it. I wouldn't want to do it for a living, but I would enjoy it. Right. Okay. So, you know, yes, I would love to, to know how to do it better. And I have studied some of it and so, but it's just not my gift, right? It's just not, and that's okay. I I have a lot of other gifts and, you know, you lean into your strengths. I see too many people try to shore up their weaknesses rather than playing into their strengths. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of play into your strengths and compensate for your weaknesses, usually financially by hiring it out, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, getting a partner on board who's good at what you suck at, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can spend the rest of your life trying to shore up your weaknesses and you will not get very far. But if you play to your strengths and you compensate for your weaknesses, then you get so far so fast, right? Mm -hmm. If I had spent all my time trying to figure out how to be a good graphic designer, I would never have gotten anywhere in business Mm -hmm. because I still suck at it 20 years later. (laughs) It's not your thing. It's not your thing. It's not my thing, baby. Just like calculus. I, people are like, is there anything you don't do? I'm like calculus. I don't do calculus. I use calculus in the real world once once yeah yeah in a landscaping application there you go. yeah yeah so yeah this is the thing is that you know this is part of the experiment is knowing getting to know yourself as a business owner and what you're good at and what you're not good at mm-hmm. and then you know uh, accounting for that right mm-hmm. so you know and yeah. you know figuring out your offers right <clears throat> that's another thing that, that can be an experiment. You try it out and see how it goes, but you got to give it time to work. Yeah. Cause you're not likely going to nail the offer the first time out, right? Mm-hmm. There might be an element of it, but there's always that feedback that you're seeking. Engaging yes. 
clients, your audience, and, and really getting that clarity. Because, you know, sometimes what I see is that people are in love with a thing or an idea and they, they just put everything into it, but that's not what other people want. Right. So right. they're, so that's where having that kind of scientist perspective, having that curiosity can be really helpful. So you're a little bit less attached to, oh, why won't people like my offer? Don't they like me? Is it me? Right. It's not you. It's not you. Yeah. No. Yeah. And it's, it's also the, not just the offer, but sometimes it's the wrong target market. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're making the right offer to the wrong target yeah. market, you're still going to have the wrong thing. You're still yeah. not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. So there's so many elements to look at. Mm -hmm. I was talking to somebody, I had a discovery call with somebody on Saturday and she was talking about how she's trying to get her business off the ground and she's already running another business, which is paying her bills and stuff. And she's like, but I don't, I don't know where I find the time. And I'm, and she's been doing these sessions locally. And, you know, I was like, your sessions locally need to go. And she's like, what? That's the new business. I'm like, no, your market, the local market has no money. That's your charity. That's not your business. So you need to give up the charity work so that you can get the business off the ground. So you have the time to get the business off the ground, you know? And so sometimes it's making those kind of hard choices and being like, oh, right. Because if your market locally can't pay you, mm -hmm. that's not a business. That's a charity, mm -hmm. right? And when you live in a very small section of the world and that small section of the world is depressed financially, then you need to go online. That's just the nature of the beast and or else you're just not going to make a living doing what you want to do. So, you know, these are, these are different things. It's, it's, it's like, okay, well, here's the experiment. Does this work? Yeah. I tried it locally. It works great. Now let's take it online. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's an experiment too, because you find out that the market can't support it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so the market can't support it. So what market does support it? That's the question. Instead of just being defeated and going, well, it's not going to work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And to her credit, that's what she was doing, right? She yeah. was reaching out to me and saying, well, you know, how do I, how do I make this go? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that sort of thing, right? So, you know, these are the sorts of things that, that you have to think about in business. So anything else you want to add to the mix yeah. there? I'm for sure, sure there is. For sure, for sure, for <laughs> sure, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. so, you know, one of the other benefits of viewing business as an experiment is that it 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 can help to relax you from attachment to it having to look or be a certain way. And so when you can relax that sense of attachment, you then are more able to access intuition. So that intuition then is that guidance from your higher power quantum field, you know, GOD, infinite intelligence, your, your guides, your guardians, your, you know, whatever you want to call it. But when you can then start to access your intuition, that's when you can start to make some of those quantum leaps in really having those kind of out of the aha, you know, ideas, those synchronicities, those, you know, out of the blue things. And so I wanted to also just share a little kind of a, a story about how this can work when you're in the experiment. So as part of my journey, I guess, I think I've mentioned before, I had like a master's in counseling and I worked at universities. And so when I was a student at a university, I was, a, I think it was an undergrad still, I was hired to actually start the first ever Canadian sexual uh, student-based sexual assault center on a university. And at the time I'd also been volunteering with a local women's sexual assault center. And so I've got quite a bit of experience working in, in trauma and sexual violence and so I didn't know that there was like a way to work in the political realm of a, of a higher institution. I didn't know that there was like certain things that you should do. I didn't know that there was like a proper protocol. I didn't know that this shouldn't have worked. And because I wasn't making an agreement, because I was more in the experiment, because I was led by intuition, okay, well, what is the next step then, right? What is the vision? What would I love? I would love a collaboration between, between the, the community-based and the university-based. I would love to expand the volunteer base of the community one and also have like kick-ass training and accountability for the, the university one. So because I wasn't attached to this is the way it's done, I was actually able to create it. Right. And so many people are like, how did you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. 
they're like, well, you, sh- you sh- that shouldn't have been able to be done. Like, how did that happen? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Right. So when you're attached to the idea that it's got to look a certain way, right. You've made an agreement with, this is the way it has to look. This is the way it has to be. Then you are rigid in your thinking. You're also rigid with the universe. So when you're rigid with the universe, you are not open to other possibilities, ideas, insights, synchronicities, partnerships, all of those things, right? The stuff where the magic really starts to happen. Totally agree. Totally agree. And, you know, I mean, you never know where this stuff's going to come from, right? I remember when I was opening my retail store. Now, I let me give this to you in perspective. Aside from the first and last month's rent, I opened my retail store on $600. It cost me $600 to open my retail store. That included all my product. Okay. So how did I do that? <laughs> Right? Not not in the 2020s, not in the 2020s. <laughs> no, this was this was 2000, 2000, 2000. Yeah, but it was but still 600 bucks was insane, right? Uh, what I did was I found my my space. I had friends who were supportive, and I went to a I went to an auction house to get all my furniture. And so I bought my furniture for super cheap, like 25 bucks a piece, right? You know, nothing. And then a friend of mine made curtains for me and that was her gift for my starting the store. And then I, I took an old, you know, I, for the walls, I took a frame and I put it on the walls and, you know, put a mirror behind it and called it good. You know, it was like no decorations really, but you know, it, it was fine. Right. And a friend of mine took some salvaged wood that he had gotten from another friend's barn and, and made me some shelves. And then there was somebody who had a, a display case sitting in their basement who, who gave it to me. I mean, it's just like, I just manifested all this stuff showing up and the store itself needed to be renovated. And so I'm sitting in there one day and I'm dreading having to redo the floors and, and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to do this. Ah. And so this random guy comes by, looks at, looks in the door and says, you know, Hey, what you doing? And I told him, and he said, you want some help? I'm a construction worker. I'm out of work and you know, I'd be happy to help you. And I was like, really? And he said, yeah. I said, I can't afford to pay you. He said, no problem. He said, but you know, you could buy me lunch. I'm like, Hey, sure. I, I, or I said, I could buy him lunch. And he said, how about pizza? I said, great. Well, he took me out to the local Home Depot and we rented the sander, which he did. He sanded all the floors for me. He worked for me for two days and all I did was buy him pizza. And he got me the contractor discount on the sander, which I wouldn't have gotten. And it saved me the cost of the pizza. And so, you know, it just, you know, and, and you just have to say yes when things come though, right? That's the thing. And also take the step, yeah. right? I think so many people get caught up in feeling like I need to know all the steps, but you're not going to know all the steps. Right. So all you can do is take the one next step, because when yeah. you take that one next step, you're going to have new insights, new information, new data, new results, right? And then that's going to inform the, the, the subsequent step. So just yeah. take the step. Well, and as I was getting ready to open. I'm like, ah, where am I going to come up with all this stock for my store? I went to a festival and I was sitting there getting ready to go to the festival. And I was like, I know exactly where I'm going to get the stock for my store because the festival always has these vendors who are selling their wares and they have no place to sell them in between festivals. And so I came with consignment agreements in hand And at the end of the festival, I went around to all the the people and said, you don't want to take that home, do you? Why don't you put it in for consignment in my store? Here's this consignment agreement just loaded in my car. Love it. Love it. I came back with an entire store full of stock from that one event. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So creative thinking, right? Yeah. Creative thinking, right? And and it's the step, just the step. You know, and there's this uh, famous quote by Thomas Edison and a journalist asked him, like, how did it feel to fail a thousand times in, you know, trying to invent the incandescent light bulb? And he said, I didn't fail a thousand times. The light bulb was an invention with a thousand steps. Oh, what if your, what if your business, right? What if your venture, what if you looked at it that way? Like, oh, I didn't get the result or the outcome I wanted. It's not a failure. It's feedback. It's just information for me. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's this an experiment. is experiment. It's an experiment, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, this is, this is an encouragement to step out of black and white thinking mm-hmm. good and bad, right? It's mm-hmm. like this worked, this didn't work, but it's now information that helps me to find the next thing that will work. It's like, okay, not this path, not that path, not that path, you know, yeah. and the key yeah. is just to not get discouraged along the way. Yeah. yeah. Or attached to right. And, right. and often when it's not, you know, it's, it's not kind of working out in the way that we want it to, it could be that the universe is redirecting you to something better. And right. one of the things that I teach my clients is to hold, you know, to kind of hold an intention or a vision with an open hand and always, always, always with this or something even greater still. Right. So when you have that, okay, so this didn't work out, it's because there's something even greater still on the way. So how cool is that then that this didn't work out because something even greater still is on the way. And so when you have that kind of thinking and that kind of energy and vibration, you are way more open to the intuition, the insights, the downloads, and you're more likely to take the next step. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So all of this and more. That's right. Keep a positive attitude. Expect that the universe is conspiring on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And then that's exactly what will happen. So Mm -hmm. with that, I think that we'll call this episode good. And thanks for so much for listening. Please remember to like subscribe and share. We appreciate you appreciating us and helping us to grow. And don't forget that what you focus on expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show of yourself.